Hello, hello, hello. I'm your host, Seb Luca, and welcome to the Technus Corner. So let's get our hands a bit dirty and get stuck right on in. But first, a word from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to take your gaming rig to the next level? This 1200 Australian dollar motherboard is designed for those who want only the best for their computer and want to unleash the full potential of their 13th gen Intel Core processors. And for the daring few, it even supports the budget Pentium Gold and Celeron processors. Because why not spend 1200 on a budget CPU, right? That will make your wallet scream with joy or pain depending on how you look at it. The bad boy, the Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Hero motherboard, a powerhouse of a motherboard, so you better believe that the specs and features match the cost. This motherboard will be the home of your gaming dream machine. And don't even get us started on the M2 support. No, I actually mean don't get us started. But wait, there's more. This motherboard also comes with an onboard Intel Wi-Fi 6E and a measly 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Yep, you heard it right. Only 2.5 gigabits for 1200. You think they'd spring for 10 gigabit like some of the 600 boards out there. But hey, it's still an improvement from dial-up. While trending social topics can't be ignored, such as hashtag artificial intelligence, some, probably from Google, would suggest a level of sentience as with AI overclocking, AI cooling, AI networking, and two-way AI noise cancellation, this motherboard will not only simplify your setup, but also improve your performance. So there you have it, the Asus ROG Maximum Z790 Hero motherboard, the ultimate choice for those who have money to burn and are thirst for high-end gaming performance. Whether it's worth it or not, well, that's up to you. And for those of you who are on a budget, well, there's always the next sale. Peace. So after all that, I ultimately had to say to the gentleman, you're going to have to leave it with me because it's not a quick fix. I'm going to have to delve deeper. Anyway, regardless of the power supply girth, uh, it's a 500 watt max power supply. That leads us to essentially the GPU and it looks girthier than stock. I'll tell you that much. What's stock in relation to this? Well, this is running often a bit beefier than usual, regardless of yesteryear, but it looks newer, which means it could be a newer, refined, beefier from yesteryear that's smaller now and requires what looks like a, hang on a minute, looks like it requires an A pin, okay? But I've just noticed something, y'all. I'm going to disconnect it right now. It requires an eight pin, but was ha and had connected a six, a six pin connected. So I've disconnected that. And guess what? We may have found a serious contender to the problem in the current PC. If my inclining is correct and nothing else is damaged further still. Actually, I'll explain more to you all a bit more eye to eye and you'll find out what's going on in my brain. Let's get a little bit more personal, y'all. A pin and six pin or six pin connection in an A pin. There are no A pins to connect up to that GPU. The GPU needs an A pin. Look, to elaborate, just come up. It is our latest video release up until this one, which is the United in Tech podcast. Yes, it's back, y'all. And it's the first one in months and months, and it's going to become a regular on our agenda at the Technus Corner. So don't forget to subscribe so you can tune in to all the latest and greatest PC related tech news as well. Or the latest episode on the other hand released and is also in the description below. That being said, enough of a plug on ourselves, but someone's going to do it. So hey, so shoot me, otherwise swell. I'm back to the six pin connector at hand, plugged into an eight pin slot with a GPU will attempt to draw more power than the cable is rated for, resulting in potential hazards that can't be 
ignored okay so no no you can't if someone says otherwise do not listen but gpu has eight pins and will expect an eight pin plug so you can however use an adapter i've got a few lying about the place in fact let's see whether i can find one right now i've got many lying about but these are my probably my cleanest ones and eight pin adapter but you get an eight pin adapter to a six pin that's great but that's a problem as well at the bare minimum you need two six pins to run like this to an a pin okay so that you can turn your six pin power into a pin power but if you do this be aware that you're sucking more power from that six pin rail than it is necessarily designed to support that's why it's recommended to have two six pins to an a pin available also a bit more food for thought you all 75 watts is generally coming from the PCIe slot on the motherboard so where the graphics card is connected to the motherboard the motherboard supplies upwards of 75 watts of power while the GPU with only a six pin connected will be getting an additional 75 watts from the six pin connection totaling about the 150 mark this current six pin connection to the a pin at the least could be drastically affecting performance available from the card but in a worst case could cause serious harm cables melting or even fire due to the requirements of power draw by a gpu that requires more power that a six pin is rated for in turn causing at times not always but at times much more power draw through a six pin resulting in a fried PSU or melted cable at least. Other times if permanent damage to components has not already occurred and hopefully it is the case or not the case in this case then this connection or lack thereof proper connection may in this case be the culprit to our on again and off again cycle being emitted by our PC currently. As it's also known to cause a fault such as this to occur, emphasizing what I said earlier in relation to an A pin required GPU searching for the connection, not finding and then in turn disengaging itself or registering a faulty connection more so, causing system shutdown and if set up so through BIOS after shutdown an automatic restart to occur, causing this dreaded on again and off again loop of terror to continue to cycle through such in this case possibly cross our fingers it is the case because if there's anything else wrong with it we may have just lost this race either way this has to be addressed if no other damage is in place and everything else is hunky-dory with this pc before pressing forward so that no further damage may occur due to this okay so yeah you all um i am not going to connect this adapter up first i'm going to remove the gpu and use a lower power gpu to establish whether the connection points are all fine on a gpu that i know is still working fine to establish whether we can then boot up and get into the bios at the very least once in the BIOS, I will, if we are lucky enough, I will assess the chip's integrity. We'll find out what we're rolling with inside the computer, best case scenario. And from there, we can address the rest of what we're going to do in relation to this PC. And that's enough said, yo, we've got a plan laid out on the table, plan of execution and attack. Let's hope that this is what's causing the problem and we can save and salvage this PC before any permanent damage has occurred. Cross our fingers, y'all. Thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner. And if you stay this long, don't forget to smash that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it shows you support me. Thank you.